Her Excellency the Vice President, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, the, His Lordship the Chief Justice, all other leaders, and mourners, and our visiting guests, the speakers of the sister parliaments, and members of the diplomatic corps. First of all, again, I extend condolences to, to the family of the late Jacob Olanya, and to all Ugandans, I extend condolences to everybody. I thank the, 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 the brother countries of Africa especially Central Africa and East Africa, for sending delegations to mourn with us. This shows the, the brotherhood we have been struggling so much for. I have my small Bible here, which sometimes I, I refer to. Now, in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7, it goes as follows. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. This is in the book of, of the Galatians, verse 7, chapter 6. And then verse 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. When I see what the late Jacob Olanya has been, to, has been able to achieve in the form of contribution. I remember these verses in the Bible. Whatever man sows, that's what he reaps. And if you don't give up, in due season, you will be rewarded. In 19, by 1962, the politics of Uganda were based on sectarianism. Sectarianism of religion, sectarianism of tribes, and looking down upon women. That's how Uganda had become a failed state. You look at the breakup of the Kabaka Yeka UPC Alliance, 1964. You look at the failure 
of the East African Federation, where Uganda was one of the contributors for the failure. You look at the crisis of 1966, the conflict between Mutesa and Obote. All that was due from sowing a bad seed. Whatever you sow, that's what you reap. Now, by 1965, some of the youth who were part of the old political parties coalesced and formed a new line. The new line was that instead of emphasizing identity, I am this tribe, I am that tribe, I am this religion, I am that religion, this one is a woman, this one is a man. This new group evolved four principles, which you know. Because our issue was, how do we create prosperity for our people? And we said, you cannot create prosperity for the people if you don't unite people. Because prosperity comes from producing a good or a service, and you sell it, and you get money, and you are able to look after your family. So how would you be prosperous if you don't have a united country, if you are breaking the country into tribes and religious groups. Secondly, how will you be prosperous if you do not work for the integration of the African market? so that we have got a big market where people can sell what they produce and get income. It is amazing how Africans worship other countries which have managed their affairs well, but they fail to see how they can improve their own situation. You find so many Africans going to the United States because the United States is a huge united country with a big market. You can go from New York to California four hours, or is it eight hours? It's one market. And that's how people, that's how businesses do well there. But when they come here, they talk of tribes and the religion and uh, gender chauvinism. Why don't you copy what is good from others? China has come up now. It has overtaken the smaller countries of Western Europe, UK, this other, France, China has, has overtaken them because they are a united big market. India is coming up. So we are seeing how can the Africans ensure their prosperity. And the people are talking about tribes, religion, gender chauvinism. That's how we said no, we don't accept this. 
We are for the principles of patriotism, what we call in uh, in uh, Swahili, Uzarendo, the unity of the country. We are for Pan-Africanism, the unity of Africa. We are for social economic transformation and for democracy. That's how we started, 1965, challenging the other line, the line of blood is thicker than water. That's what they were saying. The Wanyankore say, MCOA knew a meaning that the hyena from your area, even if it is eating you well, it will eat you better. And we said, no, a hyena is a hyena, whether it is from your area or not. So people thought it was a joke. But now, when you see our new leaders who have come up, like Olanya, I did not I did not know Olanya. These are young people. Olanya was born 1965 when I was in S5, 20 years old. I call him my, my son, Woda. But because of this line, of whatever man plants, that's what he will reap. By, by, by planting the message of unity, all these young leaders, you see them coming up. Oranya, other young people now, like the vice president, like the speaker who was speaking here, they come up because of the good seed. Whatever you plant, that's what you, you, you harvest. If you plant sectarianism, definitely you will harvest different results. But now, coming to Olanya as a person, Again, I have my Bible here. It is old, but the words are there. Luke chapter 10, Chapter 10, verses 25. And it says, And behold, a certain lawyer, ha, lawyers of Anangi, a certain lawyer, but lawyer, lawyers, be careful of lawyers. A certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And then he said to him, you have answered rightly, 
do this and you will live. But he wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him for dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. The priest did not help him. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured in on oil and wine. He set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he answered, he who showed, who showed mercy on him. So. This is, this is Olanya. When you solve people's problems, when you are a brother and a sister to other people, you become the good neighbor. In other words, in, in, in other portions of the Bible, they talk of, we shall know them by their fruits. We, we know people by what they did. Now, Oranya, you have heard people talking about him. He was young, but he had already made impact. We in the NRM, I think we first dealt with him when he was on the legal committee of parliament, although he was still in the opposition. And that's how we started seeing that he was uh, somebody of potential. He was able to break away from the sectarian politics of the opposition. Because you know the, the opposition, the, 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 the way they have been pushing. But he broke away and saw where there was some good light and came. And when he came, he made very big contribution. Now the, again the Bible. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, Verse 14. I'm quoting the Bible because that's the one I know I know a bit about. I would quote the Quran if I knew much about it, but I'm sure Aichi Gongo will. When time comes, you will be able to get the equivalents from the Quran. I'm sure they are there. So Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. I don't have to read it. If you are Christians, you would have heard of the, the story of the talents. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called who called his own servants and, and delivered his goods to them. This is the story 
of the tariffs. I don't have to read it. You must have heard about it. There are those who multiplied the tariffs, and their master was happy with them. And there are those who did not use their talents well, and their master was not happy with them. Now, that is Olanya again. The use of talents. You have heard that he was an orator, he was a good speaker. But you can be an orator for bad things and an, an orator for good things. That he was hardworking. Now, when we supported him, when we identified him and supported him to take responsibilities as a deputy speaker uh, for 10 years, he used that time to multiply his, his talents. So therefore, losing Olanya now is a big, a big loss because he was somebody definitely who was coming up and we were going to get, the country was going to get a lot of benefits from him. He had already done a good job in uniting Northern Uganda. You know, Northern Uganda, like the rest of Uganda, had been messed up by bad politics. In 1966, there was a big conflict created by these leaders, by leaders, between what they were calling the North and the South. The Nilotics and the Bantu, very dangerous people. Big, big problem between Mutesa, the Kabako of Buganda with a group, and Obote with others. That was 1966. People died, what? I was here participating in all of this, watching, and also partly participating. Then 1971, the northern faction split with the Idi Amin and the West Nairas massacring, massacring big numbers, massacring Acholis and Langi especially but also some of the Alur, Alur people from West Nile. That was in 1971. 1979, when we got rid of Idi Amin, we thought there would be peace for us. We had our line of unity, of unity, but this group, some of the groups were not interested. As soon as the Tanzanian army withdrew, the Achori Lang soldiers massacred the people in West Nile. We tried to tell them about the reconciliation, they were not interested. They were saying they had to revenge for the mistakes of Idi Amin. As a consequence, 500,000 West Nilers fled to South Sudan and to Congo. West Nile was depopulated. Then 1985, Achoris, Tito Kero, and Vazirio Kero turned against uh, Obote. Achori Langi now. When the NRM took over in 1986, we found a, a character called Ojuku. He was massacring people in Lango. And the NRM, of course, tried to unite all Ugandans. We, we, we rejected all this uh, nonsense. And we said, you, unite because you, are, you, you have similar needs. You need one another. That was our life. However, recently, when Oranya became vice chairperson, 
in a very short time, it seems to have deepened this unity in the north, which we had tried but, but not achieved as much as it seems he had, he had created in the short time he was there. So really, I need to salute Olanya and commend him as an example to you people. But again, I don't want to hear talk of northern, 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 northern. Stop that uh, Olanya was not speaker of the north, he was speaker of Uganda. So when you hear opportunists, the cham cham, the ones who are looking for cham cham, cham cham can, cham cham can, cham. talking in northern, you told them to shut up. Bolanya was speaker of Uganda. Was, he was, he, NRM supported him, not because he was uh, this group or that group, but because he was a good cadre. That's why we supported him. He would never have won if the NRM had not supported him. And they supported him because of, of his patriotism and his Pan-Africanism, not because of, of clans. Now, on the issue of death, I would like to say a number of things. Health, health is a weapon, is a weapon. Afia nichombo chamapambano. When you are healthy, some people say health is wealth. And I would like to say, yes, health is wealth, but also it is a weapon. So if you are fighters for Africa, you must pay attention to health. Because you need it to fight for Africa. That's why I always discourage people who endanger health by alcohol, taking alcohol. Pombe hatari kwa afia. Health is dangerous to, 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 health, to life. To health. Uh, no, alcohol. Alcohol is dangerous to, to health. Umaraya. Going for women, going for men, hatari. For health, very, very risky. Reckless lifestyle. Obesity. You see, you see somebody so fat. Very risky. We, we need you to fight. To fight. Now, when you die, you abandon us. You, you, you go, when you, you, when you die, when you shouldn't have died, we, we lose you. We lose your contribution. Individuals can make a difference. I can tell you that, for instance, if Mwari Munyerere had not died, when he died about 20 years ago, the East African Federation we have been struggling for would have been much further now. When I went to see Mwari when he was about to retire, 1985, when he gave me some 
some gadgets to solve some problem here. I asked, I said, Marimu, you are, you are retiring. We are about to come into government in Kampala. Why don't you hold on a bit and we come and we fulfill our dream of federation? He told me in Swahili, Usijari, wenzako wako hapa, utafanya nao. Meaning that I shouldn't worry, although he was retiring, wenzangu, my colleagues, are there. I will work with them. You know, I have been working with the Wenzang, but we have not done gone. We have not gone as much as Marimu would have. So individuals make a difference. So there are four fighters, comrades. Your health is very crucial. Don't risk it. Now, like in this case, Oranya was a very disciplined person, but the, I came to know about the, the problem for the first time when he went to Dubai. Because when he went to Dubai, he went with the Dr. King. Is he called the King? He went with some Ugandan doctors. And then when he got there, then I, I checked. I, I got to know the, 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 the issues. And by the way, I don't like this business of coming here, this one. It is really, should talk to the family. I, I don't know who, who, are, who are politicizing people's health to make it a, a political issue. It should be the, his children and his who should know. Now this whole statement by Acheng and the other one, you know, Nisha, Show that people are not. Uh, eh? But what is clear, if you had contacted me, if you had told me, I would, because you see, apparently, he had these issues to deal with, and then he had also to deal with the politics here, you know, Moro, constituency, vice chairman, NRM, Northern speakership all this time instead of if i had known i would have told him to concentrate on health but i didn't know it is only much much later when i came to know so here you people please health is wealth and is a weapon and you need to look after it very, very carefully. Don't play around with, with health. When there was this competition for this recent uh, speakership of parliament, one of the ministers contacted me. That, that minister wanted also to be in the, to compete. But, but I happened to know something about uh, the health issues of that person. So I said, no, don't, don't, don't go for that thing. I don't want you to die. Because that speakership is very dangerous. Sp sitting there the whole day, point of order, point of information, point of... Very dangerous. You, you shouldn't accept that when you, when you, if you have got some health issues. Don't. And your, your friend should tell you, if you have any friend, don't, don't, this is not good. You need something else. So please, people, health 
his wealth, but also a weapon of struggle. Now, but when death robs us of some of some our people who are useful, in the book of Joel, book of Joel, the book of Joel. Chapter 2, verse 13. I've taken time, uh, it's taking time to, but it says, Rend ye your hearts, not just your clothes. The Jews had the habit of tearing the clothes when somebody died. Joel said, No, don't, don't just have external have the internal, the, the, the internal sorrow and compassion for, for the person who was, who was dying. And that means what? It means two things. One, you have already done. I want to salute the Chief Justice and others who have thought of the Oranya Education Fund. Instead of just mourning and crying and all that only, see how to support the children. And the government will contribute to that fund after the so that the family continues. But secondly, you people, you, of course, you, you don't know much about losing people. We know more about losing people. You see, for instance, 1972, 73, when we were fighting Idi Amin. We lost so many of our, of our fighters and cadres in, the, in the, those months from September up to end of January, 73, 72, 73. We lost Martin Mwesiga, a lawyer from Dar es Salaam, Mwesuko Black, Bachelor of, Economic, Bachelor of Commerce from Nairobi, Vale Waheru, Mechanical Engineer from Nairobi, James Vilhanze, Bachelor of Literature, I don't remember from where. Kahunga Bajira, Bachelor of Economics, Makere University, Engineer Kasada. Kasada was an engineer from Czechoslovakia, Abori Maribo. All these were university graduates who were our cadres, fighters. They died in those months. From, because of the mistake, of the mistake which was made by some of, of our people. And the, and the fighters, Kazumoto, what, so, so many. Now, instead of crying and all that, and uh, we said, no. These have died, but we shall continue and, and succeed. When we succeed, they will have succeeded even if they are not there. And that's what we did. It took us, you can imagine, from 1972, setback, that setback of 1972 until 1986. That's how many years? Uh, 16 years or something like that. 
when eventually we succeeded. So they did not die in vain. So therefore, if you have seen that Olanya had become a good cadre, then continue his line, which is the NLM line, because NLM has really become, uh, Olanya had become a very ardent NRM supporter. Now, about the... I would like to salute His Grace the Archbishop Kazimba when he talked about the, the corrupt people who grab land, steal land, and when they die, Kazimba, who is the tall man, he remains only with 6.2 inches. I think you should adjust, because you need where the, where the coffin will reach. And let's give, let's give him seven, seven feet, so that the coffin can fit properly. Me with 5.8, you can give me 6.5. That will be my permanent run. But I think we need to harmonize with the church. This idea of, we had had arguments with the, with the church. You know, you know, I was going to be a bishop also. But I diverted some other work. This idea that we are visitors on earth and we are in transit. Okay, we are in transit, but let's manage the transit well also. Because my father was in transit here for 96 years. Now, it was not in order for him to sit down and say, I'm transit, I'm waiting to go and do nothing. So we are in transit, but we must develop our country and develop our families. But there's also something else. I'm in transit. Push you come. Come push you. I am in transit, but I already have an eternal branch here. This one is continuing. This person is 50% from seven, this one here. So, the, the country we are building, the property we are building, is not just for us, it is for our children. And the Africans have been here for the last four and a half million years. So, when we build up without stealing, building our economy, we are building it for our children. And even if you don't have biological children, you have got, uh, you have got uh, social children or the children of your relatives. So therefore, eternity, I'm glad Chief Justice commented on it. Eternity, according to we, the Africans, is children. With children, you are continuing. And that's why the Wanyankore say, when you die without children, that's why they say, Akatreka, his line was disconnected. But otherwise, with the children, you have not died, you have continued. Now, when the Christians came and the Muslims, they brought us the other concept, the other idea, which was there a little bit. It was there, but not very clear of eternal life, life after death, which is all right. 
I, I, I'm looking forward also to, to that one. But in the meantime, I am already eternal here. My girl there is already has, she's already eternalized. She has also already. So we work so that our children don't live in a backward Uganda again. He lives in a modern Uganda, a modern Africa. We are not working just for ourselves, but for our children. Now, this business of, of God calling us, God, God has called him, God has called him. Hmm. But why does God like to call Africans only? He has called Olanya at 56 years. He calls the Japanese. The average life expect Olanya has not reached the average life expectancy now. Because now the average life expectancy in Uganda is now 63. It used to be 43. It has come up a bit. So Olanya has not even reached the, the, the average life expectancy. But the average life expectancy in Japan is 79. Why does it God like to call Japanese? And he's always calling Africans, you come, you come, you come, you come. I don't think it is God calling these people. We must look at the causes of, the, of death in Africa. It's not, it's not God, it is something else. But for Oranya, in the short time he was here, he has made his contribution. And I'm glad, I'm glad those children are old. I spoke to Achen. She was in that place, like, uh, that strange place where she was. Is it Phoenix or something like that? I spoke to her on the phone. We were solving some issue. They are, they are old. Once you are 18 years, 20 years in Africa, you are old. You, 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 you can uh, look after your family. So we shall support you so that you continue the good work of Olanya. I thank the Ugandans for the outpouring, the, 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 the support, like CJ was talking about it, the support. People showed to Olanya the oneness. The Ugandans, the Ugandans were looking at Olanya as a patriotic Ugandan whom they had come to understand. That's how they were looking at him. Uh -huh. So that means the other sickness of, of tribes, of religion, of what? Ian Kisha. Ugandans are looking for value in people, not just uh, manipulating identity. With these few words, on behalf of the government, on behalf of the NRM, I want to salute the contribution of, 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 of Olanya, to extend condolences to his family, and to the people of, of, of Omoro, but, but we shall stand with them. Whatever Oranya was doing that we can take up, we shall take up and, 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 com and complete. Like we, we did for our comrades who died in the struggle. Whatever they died for was not in vain. I thank you and, and, and uh, uh, I wish the late Jacob Oranya eternal, rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much.